Other White House officials mentioned in that controversial new book, Confidence Men, are crying foul as well. One of them is University of Chicago professor Austin Goolsbee. He's former chairman of President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors. Good morning to you, Austin. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. So My this, pleasure. Thank you. Well, this book paints a lot of dissension within the Economic Advisory Council that President Obama initially put together, in particular, Summers and Geithner continuously, according to this book, overlook what the president wants and expects. Was there any of that happening when you were there? Well, not really. I, I haven't read, I mean, to, to be fair, the book's just coming out today. I, I haven't read the book and I, and I don't plan on buying it. But from the reports that I've read that sort of characterize the president as if he weren't in charge, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, the, t the time I was in the White House, um, sure, it's a big organization and people got different views, you know, and, the, and they would present those views before the president, but the president fundamentally was the guy making the decisions. And all the times when I saw Summers and Geithner and others, if the president said, here's what I've decided we're going to do, they would do it. So was it then the president who decided not to dissolve Citigroup in March of 2009 after he gave this order in March of 2009 to Treasury Secretary Geithner to do so? Well, I, 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 I saw that reported that it was in the book, uh, but I think that's just factually wrong. It, was, it wasn't. The president didn't give the order, go dissolve Citigroup, and then the Treasury say, no, all of those, if you remember back at that moment, they were doing the stress tests on the banks, which was the test to determine whether they were inadequate, they had inadequate capital. And the stress test took something like eight weeks. Nobody was talking about dissolving anyone before the stress test is done. You had to have the, the numbers so that there wouldn't be a run on every other bank as they said, oh, no, well, if they're going to dissolve banks without, without even doing the test, where are we? So I, I think they just kind of got the, the, the author of this book got the timing mixed up. That, that, that wasn't the way it occurred. So the president never said dissolve Citigroup to the Treasury Correct. Secretary? All right. Correct. I want to take a turn and talk about the economy here. And right now, the president has a new proposal on the table, $3.6 trillion in deficit cuts, a lot of it focusing on Medicare cuts in Medicare and Medicaid spending, and then also these increases in tax rates on the super wealthy Americans. Is it, in your opinion, a good idea to start raising taxes on anyone when the economy is barely growing and unemployment is 9.1%? Well, in the, I, I looked at the, uh, at, at the proposal you're talking about, and it, it looked like the, n none of the tax increases were coming right away when the, when the economy was, uh, you know, still trying to reignite. The taxes were well in the future, not until 2013 and, and after that. I think the, from what I read, the essence of the thing was, was trying to be balanced, that you would have some spending cuts, You'd cut discretionary spending, you'd cut defense, you'd cut um, entitlements, and you'd raise some revenue because we have had the feature that very high-income people's tax rate is the lowest it's been in something like 60 years. That, that was the reasoning. And I do think that a balanced approach is better than a, than a one-sided approach. Just, just one last point, Austin. Uh, the White House, in their estimates, say that unemployment is going to be at 9 percent by the end of next year. So even if these increases come in 2013, they're going to come at a time when the economy, according to the White House, is still in a precarious position. Well, I think the essence, I, I'm, I'm not sure that the, the general forecasts are an unemployment rate as high as you say, but it's clearly going to be too high. But I think the essence is what, how fast is the economy growing? Um, you either got to decide you think that the long run deficit is too big and try to cut it, or you can say, well, we're just going to ignore the deficit uh, for however many years it takes to get okay. the unemployment rate back down. We have to wrap I it up there, I think in the Austin. short run, you got you to do that. We sure. appreciate you being with us. Austin Goolsby, thank you.